Tri Nations 2020, and it's finished with a draw. Another draw. There's no separating the Pumas and the Wallabies again. This time it's 16 points apiece. I'll go through some of the key events from this game, which featured quite a few cards. More cards than tries, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I'll go through the key numbers, the events, and uh, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one went down. So it's a draw. Um, if the All Blacks win the Tri Nations, that's the thing about this game. It was going to take a miracle from either of these sides to be able to mathematically get over where the All Blacks are at. But the fact that these teams have drawn again maybe adds a little bit of legitimacy to the All Blacks winning the trophy. It's one when no side really got on top at all, is it? So. A bit of deja vu in this game in itself in that, man, the Wallabies have a lot of ball, especially early. They had virtually all the ball for the first kind of 10 minutes. Um, they were down the, the Argentinian end. They would knock on. Facundo Isa put a huge tackle on Michael Hooper. Um, their defense just kept holding out. Um, the Wallabies were doing that thing again where they kept kicking for touch. Again and again and again with these penalties they were winning. Um, they would not take the three points. Matt Phillip on 14 minutes knocked it on right down the Puma's end. The TMO did go back and have a look right after the uh, Phillip knock on for some foul play by uh, Marcos Kremer when he was cleaning out James O'Connor. And he ruled that Kremer had used his shoulder which had contacted James O'Connor's shoulder and they ridden up to his head so mitigating factor it's a yellow card so Kramer spends 10 minutes at the bin and when they get the extra man that's the moment the Wallabies are like right now that it's 15 on 14 we're gonna take a shot at goal so they did they made it three points to nil and the rain was really coming down by this point it was a bit wet early on but it was absolutely torrential for pretty much the rest of the game which didn't help some of the handling but that's just the way the game goes sometimes uh 17 minutes the pumas uh their mall ends up getting a penalty sanchez slots a hell of a kick from 50 meters out 50 meters the kick goes in off the post and suddenly the Wallabies, despite having the extra man, are still only three points to three. They haven't managed to get ahead at all. Uh, 19 minutes, both sides are knocking it on. Bruni actually kind of goes close because I think the Wallabies knock it on. And then Bruni kicks it, or at least one of the Pumas guy kicks it upfield. Bruni, the loose forward, is one of the guys chasing it. But there's a second knock on, so there's kind of nothing doing from that one. But it was a bit of a scary moment if you're a Wallabies fan. Uh, 25 minutes, the yellow card's pretty much over, and it's it's three points apiece. So you give that as a big time win to the Pumas. They had the the man down, but they still managed to to hold out well and actually score three points during that period. Uh, 27 minutes, Hooper gets a yellow card for what the referee called a similar one to Kremer's yellow card. It's another one where it's a shoulder on the shoulder, which rides up to the head. Now, to be honest, if you looked at it at the right angle, you could argue that Hooper's one was uh, shoulder to head directly. I thought Kramer's one was kind of, it's either going to be yellow or a penalty. Whereas Hooper's one, where I was thinking, it's either going to be a yellow or a red. So the fact that they both ended up yellow was maybe a bit fortunate for Hooper. But either way, Argentina missed touch from their resulting penalty. But a few minutes later, Miotti, who's come on for Sanchez, who's having an HIA, uh, he slots a penalty from a line-out, so it's six points to three. Um, 33 minutes, we have one of the most bizarre moments you'll ever see. There's, I think it's a, a Pumas guy knocks a ball backwards, and Simmons, who would have been in an offside position if it had been from a Wallaby's hand, but it's from Puma's hand, so Simmons is not offside. He's got all the Puma's players, for the most part, behind him. And in front of him is the Puma's try line. And I guess he has a semi-panic attack and just boots the hell out of the ball. It's actually a decent kick. Uh, goes into touch, gives the Wallabies some good territory. 
but it's just a moment where I guess Rob Simmons was not accustomed to being in that kind of situation. However, a few minutes later, we have probably the moment of the game. Uh, Del Gui gets the try for for the Pumas. He gives Paisami a big don't argue in this in this uh, build up as he goes towards the try line, but it's Escura, the the halfback for the Pumas. Who, to be honest, I personally wouldn't play ahead of Bertrandu, but he starts. And uh, he comes in for a fair bit of criticism, does Escura. But he's the one who has the line break. And he's the one who gets the ball to Delgi. And Delgi manages to, manages to apply the finish. So, uh, suddenly it's 13 points to 3. And the Pumas have had virtually no ball at all. Uh, the yellow card period with Michael Hooper being in the bin is suddenly 10 points to nil. So they've managed that yellow card period a lot better than the Wallabies did with their own man advantage. Um, 42 minutes though, the Wallabies do manage to get a penalty to make it 13 points to six. And uh, the Wallabies managed to go five meters out from the Pumas half, uh, before the Pumas, um, the Pumas goal line right before half time. But there's nothing doing. Half time stats finish 77 to the Pumas, uh, Wallabies in terms of run meters, 97 to the Pumas. Position is 71 29, uh, territory is 82 18. So somehow the Wallabies have had more position, more territory, less run meters, and the Pumas tackling is at 93%, which is unbelievable. 76 tackles. The Wallabies have only had to make 18, and they're at 69%. So pretty poor defensive shift. Second half starts is a pretty tight period. Some big tackles. Um, Nick White runs into Montoya and falls down because Montoya is a pretty big chap. Uh, 50 minutes, the Wallabies get a scrum penalty and they take it. So it's nine points to 13. 59 minutes, Salakai Lotto. Big moment of the game. He gets red carded. Pretty much right on the hour. Just throwing my pen to the floor. Um, it's... It's a shoulder to the head, man. And the way they referee the game is just a shoulder to the head, kind of contact to the head is red card. And then they mitigate their way down. Was the guy slipping? You know, was there, um, was the tackler slipping or, you know, was he pushed or was there some other kind of mitigating factor? There's nothing. So it's just a straight red card for Salakai Aloto big moment in the game especially when they are uh, down so in the scheme of things the wallabies actually do pretty well to come back from this one um from the resulting penalty though the pumas kick it right on the hour so it's 16 points to nine but with the extra man that's the last scoring the pumas will do in this game uh polos gets yellow carded for the pumas on 68 for bringing a wallabies mall down pretty cynically the wallabies mall is going in for all money but polos drags it down so he gets yellow carded. Uh, the Wallabies go for touch. And it's a risk that pays off because they set another mall and they manage to score it. This is through the captain, Michael Hooper. And Reese Hodge has a pretty clutch conversion to make it 16 points apiece. It's looking like maybe it's going to be a draw. Um, the yellow card period's over. So the Wallabies win the yellow card 7-0. to nil. This time they actually capitalize on it. Kind of. Because they've got a man already red carded so it's 14 on 14 but the fact that the Pumas were down a man they actually managed to capitalize on it in the scheme of things uh 79 minutes Reese Hodge who's twice had opportunities to win deadlock games once against the All Blacks in Wellington and once against the Pumas two weeks ago has the chance to do it again with a long -ish range penalty you better believe he misses it wide. He misses it wide. Third chance, and he doesn't get lucky. The game continues. Um, Pumas kick it off. Wallabies attack. Hooper knocks it on, but it's advantage. Pumas attack. Knock it on. I think Wallabies get the ball back, and eventually there's a knock on. Game finishes with a knock on. I think it's Hooper again. Game over. It's another draw. Uh, Full-time stats, run meters 169 to 156, so pretty low. The Wallabies edge it, but remember it was really wet. Position is 70-30, territory 
Wallabies once again failed to capitalize on having a heap of ball and a heap of territory, but the Pumas defense, 92% tackling. Phenomenal effort. Uh, 135 tackles. The Wallabies made 34, so 101 less. Their tackling percentage was at 74, so a bit disappointing. Uh, the Wallabies lineout was good, 95%. The Pumas a bit disappointing at 76. Knock-ons, 13 to 11. Wallabies having more. That's a disappointing number of knock-ons from the Pumas, seeing as they only had 30% of the ball. But again, it's wet, so there was always going to be handling errors. Four cards in the game is quite a lot. Penalties conceded 14 to 8, with the Pumas conceding 14. Um... Maybe the Wallabies need to kick for kick for goal more. I don't know. They did manage to get that reward through Hooper's throw that one time. Korobidi is the best Wallabies attacker with 27 run meters, which is not a lot. And three defenders beaten. Dalgi gets 40 run meters and six defenders beaten. Um, Alamano has 16 out of 17 tackles. Issa had 14 out of 15. And remember, he put that big, ta uh, big tackle in in the first half. De La Fuente put in a big tackle on Korobidi. But man, it was a wet game. The Pumas' defense continues to be good. The Wallabies' defense failed to unlock it once again. Remember, this is the same country that had 38 points put on them by New Zealand last week. So that'll be a bit disappointing for the Wallabies. I think 16 points apiece with all that position and whatnot going the Wallabies' way, it's probably a moral victory for the Pumas, even if it's a draw. But yeah, we will see. That's it for the Tri-Nations. The All Blacks are the winners. Two draws between these two countries is kind of crazy. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully the Argentinian guys can get games somewhere if there's no Super Rugby on for them next year. That seems to be pretty much done. I think maybe they're going to look towards the South American competition. Uh, Super Rugby AU. I'm sure the guys will get a short break before they're in preseason for that competition. But, yeah. You guys let me know what your thoughts were on this one. And I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.